Hello Booktube. I am Roz and this is another journey through books, or at least a journey through 2018. I thought I would do the 2018 postscript tag because, well, it's almost the end of December. In fact, about two or three days away from the end of December and I don't see myself getting through way too many more books in this time. So I thought I would try out the tag. So it was created by Adam at Memento Mori and I've seen Mel at Mel's Bookland Adventures do it and David at The Poptimist and I thought, you know what, if not, why not? I will do it too because I haven't been tagged. But that's okay. I understand. I've been AWOL for so long you probably forgot I existed. Anyway, let me get on. I hope you don't mind. I abbreviated the questions so that it would take less time to write them down and I don't know if I can get them all right. So the first one is the longest book you have read this year and that one is The Wise Man's Fears by Patrick Rothfuss which comes in at a whopping 994 pages. I really can't believe I didn't read a book over a thousand pages this year. However, the size of this print makes one think that maybe it should have been over a thousand pages with a kinder publisher or one who cared less about trees. The book that took the longest time to finish. Ulysses. It took two starts even. This was painful. Um, as I said when I reviewed it, I enjoyed pieces of it. I could take a look at fragments and go, wow, I can see the beauty in the writing, etc. But as a whole, man, this just... Pff, it's finished. It won't happen again. <laughs> I won't make that mistake. Okay, so the second one is a book you read in 2018 that was out of your comfort zone. So I'm assuming that this probably means the kind of genre that you don't read. And I tend to read pretty much every genre except romance, and I didn't read one of those. So I'm going to go for Fatherland by Robert Harris, which is a book that is set in a, um, a world where Nazi Germany won. And if that isn't out your comfort zone, then I'm not too sure, <laughs> because I know that I would have been executed rather painfully, publicly, etc. in this day and age. So, yeah, but out of comfort zone, this could have happened. Does this, yeah. So I'm going to put this down, because my comfort zone likes being around. But, yeah, it, it was pretty good. Um, horrifying, terrifying, considering it could have happened. But anyway... Then I've number three. Um, how many books did you reread in 2018? One. Your favorite reread of 2018? Well, that is going to be hands down The Island of the Blue Dolphin by Scott O'Dell. This is a book that I read when I was a child in primary school still. And I remembered absolutely loving it. And then I found it in a discounted section in my favorite bookshop. And I thought, what the hell, I'll get it. And give it a reread and see what I think of it now as an adult. And you know what? It was actually still pretty damn good. It's actually set on a, well, about a real um, woman. Um, she was stranded, I'm assuming. Um, that might be right, historically. Um, on an island where she survived on her own for decades. And it was really interesting how she um, made clothes, how she lived, dealing with the... It wasn't seal um, skin traders, but otters, and hiding away from them, etc. You know, until she got to real, um, until she actually got rescued in the end. Except in this case, rescued is in quotation marks because I went and I looked up the real history, and that was rather depressing because she died shortly thereafter. I don't suppose there were germs on her deserted island. Um, but anyway, so it, it was an interesting read. Um, I really enjoyed it. And for a book for young girl power, if not, why not? Um, a book um, you read in 2018 that you look forward to rereading in the future. Well, this is me. And how can I go a video about the year's reading without going, ta-da, Wolf Hall, Hilary Mantel. I would love to reread this in the future. I might reread it before I read bring up the bodies but I have a feeling I probably won't because I'm really dying to get to that and it's not like I've forgotten what happens in here so but this was fabulous I would love to reread it in the future Wilful Hilary Mantel in case you don't know it's about Thomas Cromwell in the time of Henry VIII oh and I would also probably look forward to reading rereading anything by CJ Sanson that I read this year or last year because that's when I started 
Then the next one is um, interesting. Um, a favorite single short story or novella. Now the novellas that I read this year were school set works and they will not ever fall on any list that comes with favorite unless maybe favorite books to say bad things about. So we're not going to go into that. So short stories once again they're also school related, school set work and there were some that were pretty decent actually and I think my favorite of the lot was probably The Boy Who Painted Jesus Black or Christ Black by Henrik um, Clark. Oh my handwriting. So um, that was an interesting one, a very short story. I mean how do you give a synopsis of that? It's a story where um, it's set in a black school in America and set in a time where race, race relations, well why should you be in Asia you can't say that anymore fast, um, were very tense and a little black boy in the school painted a picture of Jesus but he painted him as a black man and it's the repercussions of that. But it was a very interesting story and I thought quite well written and short sweet to the point as well. It came with an impact. The next question is um, Mass Appeal, a book you would recommend to a wide variety of readers, obviously that I read this year. And I am going to go for Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I don't usually do pop fiction. Um, you know, if it's on the bestseller list, I don't usually read it. I mean, there are some exceptions. But my favorite bookseller said to me, give it a try, it's got a twist. And I thought, ah, I feel like a twist. And then after the chaos that was this year, I felt like something that was, let's say, a little bit less IQ demanding. And you know what? As I said in um, a comment to um, another booktuber, um, Remembered Reads, I said it went down like hot chocolate on a cold night. It was just what I was in the mood for. It was brilliant. The only thing with this is that they made a TV series. Apparently, I haven't seen it. So I'm guessing that a lot of people might know what happened. But I absolutely love this. And I think it's an easy read. It's a gripping read. It's a captivating read. And it's cleverly done at the same time. So it's something that I would find quite easy to recommend to a lot of people. And then it says um, Specialized Appeal. A book you liked... Um, a book that you like but would be hesitant to recommend um, to just anyone and I'm going to go for two because it's by the same author here and um, that would be Autumn and Winter by Ali Smith and the reason I'm saying that is because look I absolutely love that and in these circles I mean read them I'm not going to be hesitant here but in my real life circles I don't know many people who are avid readers really and I don't know many people who if they are readers, are readers of anything that is not pop fiction. So I think the writing style in that would probably put a lot of people off. I think the fact that the plot line itself is a bit hazy would also put a lot of people off. So it, it's something that I would only recommend to people whose reading taste I really knew well. And then number nine, <laughs> reflect on your year as a bookish content creator. Um, for example, your goals met, good or bad memories, favorite video, etc. Uh, the year that I went able, in fact, I went able in time to miss my YouTube birthday, my first year birthday. It was, yeah, look, years like this don't come around twice. Um, you can't lose the same people more than once. And unfortunately it, it put a spanner in the works. I can see that my reading totals for the year have dropped. I'm only at 109 where usually I'm in about 130 um, because yeah what with Gran um, dying slowly etc. Um, June is the, the holiday, the winter holiday is usually where I get quite a lot of reading in and there wasn't time for some of it and I just I can't say I was in a reading slump. I wasn't not wanting to read it's just that what I was reading was feeling fickle, it was feeling unrealistic, um, it was feeling stupid. So I wasn't enjoying it and well, what I found to read, uh, actually what worked the best was Don Quixote. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have a dog jump on my lap any second now. So if that happens and I have to hit pause, you'll know why. Um, so yeah, goals met. No, I did not put out a video once a week. Um, bad memories? I didn't have any bad memories of booktube though. I've had great memories of booktube. I have met some fabulous people this year online. Um, my subscribers are awesome. I love the fact that we can actually have conversation in the comments. 
I love the fact that people were coming to like sending me messages. I only got them afterwards because I actually just didn't have time for YouTube in the end. Um, were saying, you know, where are you? Are you all right? Please come back. Um, so, but so I've only got really good memories. Um, I've never had. I think I've had one dislike, but hey, I suppose that's initiation. Um, <laughs> But yeah, favorite video. I, I can't think of a favorite video that I've done this year. Um, uh, they're, they're all pretty much the same. Maybe that should be a goal for next year. Try and do something different. <laughs> but um, yeah. And then who do I tag? So I know a lot of booktubers have done this. So I'm just going to wing out a few of my regulars. I'm going to tag Eleanor at Eleanor Macrodina. Um, she's still making videos, I see. And um, Leah at Hide and Seek, if you decide to come back, here's something you can talk about. That is my wrap up for the year, kind of. Although we're not done yet, I hope. Um, happy reading for now. Talk to you later. Bye.